What's up guys, it's Wujin TV here. Northeast in the mire lie the in-ground bunkers of the people of the Free States. Marked by a blue and red star surrounded by a broken chain, you'll immediately know who they belong to. The people of the Free States tried to do the right thing, but they ended up losing everything because of it. So who are these people? What are their motivations? And most importantly, what happened to them? Today we continue our look into the Fallout 76 lore. If you haven't seen my video on the Overseer, I highly recommend going and watching that video. So near the northernmost part of the mire, we stumble across Abby's bunker. Here is the Overseer. Overseer's log, Free State Bunker. Sam Blackwell and Raleigh Clay. Those damn traitors and their secessionists turned their backs on America to form their free states. Concrete bunkers. You'd never get that past a vault tech radiation proofing inspection, that's for sure. Sounds like they let go of their paranoia long enough to seek out help from the other survivors. Just have to hack this terminal, see what they left behind in there, and what they wanted to do. In this tape, the Overseer touches on Sam Blackwell and Riley Clay. These are the founders of the Free States. Blackwell was an accomplished politician who served two terms in the Senate for the state of West Virginia. He championed the coal miners union, which made him immensely popular. He had a bright political future ahead of him, but he ended up spoiling it because of his support for the organization that he created, the Free States. Some members of the Free States were radical and occasionally had scuffles with the police. Presumably, Sam Blackwell had to make a decision between being a politician and a member of the Free States. He decided the latter and left politics, and went into hiding with his daughter Judith. We'll talk about the other co-founder here in a minute, but for now, let's enter the Free State Bunker and see what it holds. Upon entering, you're greeted with the voice of Abigail. Greetings, stranger. Now, don't panic. My name is Abby, I'm not your enemy, and this isn't a trap. In fact, if you're hearing this, it means I'm not even alive. I was with a group called the Free States. We gave our lives trying to finish what we called the Scorch Detection System. The system will let you know when the Scorched are coming and has the means to help deal with the Scorch Beasts. If you can help, I've created a set of recorded instructions to complete the system. First, you need to find the final communications uplink, and chances are high it'll need repairs. We entrusted it to a guy named Madigan and told him to place it on the antenna at top of the world. Find the uplink. You can use my workbench here to repair it. Then check in at the main SDS terminal to trigger my next recording. If you're still there, I really hope you're willing to help a dead girl out. If so, good luck. And if not, well, enjoy dealing with the scorched. And if by some chance this is Madigan, your timing sucks. Like she said, the bunker is empty other than a few rad roaches. There's some pretty good junk in here, so if you're headed this way, make sure to have plenty of inventory space. Near the dining area, we find Abby's workstation. Notice, if you made it here, I'm hoping it is still safe to assume that you're 100% human. I've yet to see Scorched or Super Mutants use a terminal. Read the entries, save the world, make it mean something. To the lucky survivor who found this terminal, my name is Abby, Abigail if you want to get all technical, and I am, or was, the last surviving member of the group called the Free States. Since the war, Mother Nature's gotten quite creative. Her last babies, the Scorch and Scorch Beast, are by far the biggest threat. If you're interested in saving humanity, I'm really hoping you'll help a dead girl out and finish this system. Everything you need to know is in this terminal, along with a few other informative bits. Fingers crossed, it's all still up and running. Scorch Detection System, SDS. Everything you need to know about setting up the Scorch Detection System, SDS. First off, what is the SDS? I'm glad you asked. The SDS is an early warning system for the Scorched. We've placed detectors all over Appalachia that pick up their special radiation signature. We were successfully able to pull off some local tests here in the mire, but we weren't able to finish everything necessary to complete the system as a whole. That's where you guys come in. 
Now that we learned about the SDS, we're going to skip forward a little bit, because a lot of this information is specific to the quest that we'll be covering in a different video, and not really important to the free states. So that's Abby's bunker. We find an entry in her workstation that shows where Riley's bunker is, so we're off to that one next. The same entry also has the password for Riley's bunker, so we can enter straight away. Inside the bunker, it's empty again, other than radroaches. And in one of the bedrooms, we find a holotape that's titled Family and So-Called Friends. It's been two weeks since I lost Trish and Marty. Two weeks since we lost Harper's to those things, those scorched and that nightmare. Two weeks of keeping it together for Mike and Megan and all the others. Sam, where the hell are you? I can really use my best friend right now. This was our thing, you know. We, we were in this together. You started in with the secrets, the no-shows. You practically shoved Emily out the door. Now you're doing it to me. I was your best friend for over 40 years. I, trusted you to help me see this through. You acted like you gave half a damn about anything besides yourself. You, you could have helped me. Maybe I never would have made the decision to rebuild Harper's Ferry. Maybe half my family would still be alive. He mentions Harper's Ferry and the disaster that occurred there, so we'll have to head over there after we explore the rest of the bunkers. Next, we find a holotape next to his terminal titled Madigan Encounter. Remember, Madigan was a new member of the Free States who was given the task of placing an uplink at the top of the world for the SDS. Is it recording? Make sure it's recording. I got it, Eddie. It's recording. Jesus. All right, Madigan. You want to explain why we found you out there tampering with our stuff? Hey, you guys are always holed up in your bunkers. How else can I get your attention? Besides, a crazy contraption like that? Of course I'm going to try to figure it out. By the way you guys came out, fully armed and ready to fight, I'm guessing it's pretty big. What you nearly broke was a scorch beast lure. It's the best defense we have against them. Whoa, you're telling me you're luring those things down? Ah, uh, you got some balls, Free States. Even with your numbers. Taking on a beast is no easy task. It doesn't just lure them down. We found some research and tech at one of the Brotherhood's old outposts. Hella realized if we can blast a scorched beast with a certain frequency, it disoriented long enough for us to go in and take it out. Neeraj and Abby started work on the tech. We tested it. Works. This is a real game changer, Rally. If what you say is true. It's true, Hank. The system would be done if it weren't for those damn raiders. Look, if this is as big as you think it is, the fire breathers can handle any raiders. But I need to know how the system works and see it in action first. If you think we're gonna just reveal our work to an ex-Brotherhood member, think you you want to see how this system works, well, you've got some serious trust to earn. So this tape is a discussion between Riley Clay and an ex-Brotherhood member known as Hank Madigan. Hank is probably a current member of the Fire Breathers, but we're going to have to explore further to find out more. But first, let's explore the bunker more. Like Abby's bunker, we can find a good amount of low-level junk in here. This is a doomsday bunker, after all. We can also find an underground garden. This is a great place to stock up on gourds and corn to plant at your camp. But back out in the main living area, sitting on a shelf in the common room, we find another tape titled Never Ending Missions. Ah, man. Whew. I feel like it's been non-stop missions for a while now. Gather supplies. Head out. Take a beat. Set up a thing. Take a few more beats. Come on. Heal up. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Most days, I'm not even sure I were still alive. <laughs> We've been working on this detection system for so long now, I feel like we'll never see the end of it. 
detectors, lures, uplinks. I think I'd rather die than head back to another relay tower at this rate. Uh. But Raleigh and Neerid say it's worth it. And I believe them. Those scorched are nasty business. And if I had the means to let people know they're coming, better yet, maybe take a scorched piece out along the way, hell yeah, it's safe worth it. All right, that's all for Riley Clay's bunker. Let's move back north to Ella Ames' bunker. Ella looks to be a biologist or a medical doctor of some sort. In her bunker, she has a lab instead of a garden. Here she is talking about the mire. July 15, 2079. Wow. Who would have thought a little radiation would turn this world upside down? We were down in those bunkers for what? A couple of years? There's no way radiation did all this all by itself in that amount of time. I mean, first off, this place is crawling with those, those orange red vines, the likes of which there there is no precedent for. I saw a toad that wouldn't even fit in a bathtub. A 12 point with two heads. Be still my heart. And insects. Oh, you don't even want to know about. I've started taking samples for analysis. Hopefully the plants can still be used for some good old holistic treatment. Raleigh's getting to work on a series of tests for the water and soil. I don't know. I guess we can count ourselves lucky the air is breathable. But this place? I grew up here. And I barely recognize it. There's no way we were prepared for this. Toxicity levels, slight mutations, yes. But uh, I'm telling you, Darwin would lose his mind out here. Ella and her research of the Rad Shield, which you find on her terminal, is stuff for another video, because it's part of a whole other quest mostly unrelated to the Free States. But besides the Rad Shield project that she was working on, she was also involved in the beginning stages of the research that led to the SDS. The next tape we can find right above her computer, hidden behind this test tube holder. In this tape, we hear about what happens to Abby's father. To my dearest Abigail and Calvin, I've instructed Ella to give you this holotape on the event of my death. Please don't blame anything you're about to hear on her. These are my wishes. Ella has respected them, and I expect you to as well. I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's. I've still got plenty of time to live a normal life. Well, normal as can be expected. But the time will come where my health will deteriorate and I can no longer care for myself. I love you both tremendously, and you know that, but I will not be a burden to you, my children, especially in these dark times. If everything has gone according to plan, hopefully my death has meant something. Please understand why I chose not to tell you. Abby, you are smart enough to see our work through till the end. Calvin, you're turning into such a fine young man, your mother would have been proud, but not as proud as me. You two, take care of each other. You're going to make it through this. I know it. So that's Ella Ames' bunker. And in fact, that is the last bunker of the Free States. The remaining two, one remaining to the Carson family, and the other, only being described as abandoned, are completely void of supplies and information. There was no password required to enter these bunkers, so presumably, they were ransacked. So the only place left to go is Harper's Ferry. Approaching Harbor's Ferry, I had to fight through a ton of super mutants on the outside of these fortifications. After clearing the supers, I started pushing closer to the large church that was the centerpiece of the town. Cutting my way through waves of scorched, I finally reached it. And all we find is devastation. So why were the Free States in Harper's Ferry? Well, according to Ella Ames, it was because the people of the Free States wanted to rebuild. And rebuilding starts with security outside of their bunkers. So they tried to create a safe safe zone around the church to assist the remaining people and start the rebuilding process. Here is Ella Ames again. May 2nd, 2080. Jesus, I'm tired. 
Ever since we agreed to help rebuild Harper's, it's just been non-stop work. These people are in some bad shape. Some are improving, but it pains me to see our supplies dwindle. It's just that logical knowledge of knowing you packed for four and then suddenly you need to provide for eight. On the bright side, we met a guy named Derek the other day who said he's with a group of people called the Responders. They seem to have realized what we knew all along. That the government wasn't going to lift a finger to help clean up this mess. The responders have been at it from the start. No sign of order, so they took it upon themselves to organize and help those in need. It's also a relief to no longer be the only one with a real medical background and training. Derek said he could bring back some supplies and help out a bit. At least until we're more settled. Lucy's been a great help, but her training as an esthetician can only go so far. Things are finally starting to shape up around here at Harper's Ferry. We got a lot of defenses up and running, a rail perimeter, and people taking lookout shifts. Nearish is working on some new contraption to help with these brutal storms that sweep through. He said they could filter the air or something. And Ella's got a decent clinic set up with the help of the responders. Makes me feel like maybe Riley was right. We can have a real go at this. Some of these survivors proved they aren't completely worthless, too. <laughs> One guy, Duncan, turned out to be a decent hunter. And another gal, <laughs> Kendall. Oh, shit. He's a better shot than me. Still, you look at these people struggling here and just think, you bastards had your chance. We practically spelled it out for you. You just turned your noses up and called us crazy. Bunch of idiots. So what happened here? We can make some assumptions. The bodies piled up around the entrance of the church leads me to believe that there was some sort of attack, probably by the Scorched. They probably broke through their defenses, which were substantial. After the Scorch broke through, everyone fell back to the church, where they were picked off one by one until nobody remained. But luckily, you don't have to take my word for it. In the Morgantown airport, we find a holotape brought there by one of the surviving responders that was working with the Free State. Hey everyone. This is Derek, making my final report on the events at Harper's Ferry. Hopefully this reaches you all safely. Whatever happened here, it, it was big. The whole area is, it's, it's devastated. If any of our people survived, I, I can't find a trace of them. I talked to some of the locals. They say creatures came from the sky and laid waste to the town. Some of the ones who got hurt in the attack were transformed or something. They apparently turned into monsters and attacked anyone they could reach. Riley says he and his people are gonna seal themselves up in their bunkers and try to figure out a way to fight these creatures. In other words, we won't be getting any more help from these Free States guys. Maria, I was hoping you could get in touch with Ella, see if maybe she can lean on Riley a little see that this isn't the way. If you ask me, I, I think it's damn selfish of them to turn their backs on the rest of us. On people who need their help to survive. Uh, there's nothing else I can do here. Guess we can scratch Harper's Ferry off the map. I'll be heading back soon. But I, I want to check in on some of the farms along the way. Should be about a week. So that's the story of the Free States, a group of people who tried to rebuild and help society, but ended up losing everything because of it. It's now up to you to finish their projects, so all of their work isn't in vain. Alright, that's all I have on the Free States. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out my small channel. Also, if you've made it this far in the video, consider joining my channel's membership. You get a cool little Mothman symbol next to your name when you comment, and a few other perks. It goes a long way in supporting my channel, so thank you. But anyway, this has been Wujin TV. Thanks for watching, guys.